Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Anderton's TV. And today, my special guest is Colt from Walrus. Hey, uh, Mr. Walrus, no yeah. doubt. So, yeah, I guess. Welcome to the UK. Hey, I feel First welcome. time here? This or... is, this is my first time to the UK ever. Oh, good for you. So, and are you liking trip. it so far? I really love it. Yeah, Excellent we, stuff. we're having a really great time. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it because in about uh, two weeks time, no one ever will be allowed in again. So, yeah, uh, that's what I heard. Anyway. So we're trying to get uh, it in now. Yeah, get it in now, <laughs> quick, yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. That's not true, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, Walrus. Um, I, I kind of, I think I remember life before Walrus. Yeah, I do too. And then kind of, there was yeah. this very short period where they were a bit sort of niche and boutique and kind of had crazy graphics on. And then uh -huh. it exploded. Yeah. And now it's like it's Walrus everywhere. It's literally like going to some sort of small island in the Atlantic and, uh, you know, North Atlantic and just covered in walruses, basically. It's exactly, exactly I mean, what's happening. So... Yeah. So give us a little bit of background. Who so, are you? Yeah, and so I, my name's Colt and I run Walrus Audio. Um, and uh, it, it, so yeah, you're right. It kind of, we, the Voyager came out first in 2011 and then it was kind of a steady growth um, from there. And then, uh, you know, we really started turning heads with the release of the Descent Reverb. And uh, it was kind of a big, massive, you know, project with Shimmer when Shimmer was first, you know, yep. the, one of the drugs that everybody was choosing, <laughs> getting high on. And then uh, it really wasn't until the Julia Chorus Vibrato um, when we really started, Walrus started to, you know, gain a lot of speed, a lot of traction. And, and then, uh, yeah. And, and that's crazy because so. that, that, that is about the timeline... You know, so you go back eight, nine years and you sort of go, OK, yeah, it, was a, it wasn't like a must have brand, but it existed. And then, like you say, the Julia came out and then the next thing you know, there's like purchase orders for 20 pedals a week going in from us, at least. Yeah. And ever since then, it's almost like every pedal you've done. It's been like the Midas touch and just like. So what? Yeah. I, I, what's your background as a guitar player? So that's my background. I'm a guitar player. Right. Excellent. <laughs> I'm a guitar player. So, uh, I mean, I played locally in bands in Oklahoma City and worked on a couple projects here and there. Um, and, then, uh, and then I went to school for business. And so, you know, kind of mixing my passions for, uh, you know, audio tweaking and, uh, and high grade audio quality and then business, uh, you kind of get Walrus Audio and that's a good fit for me. And then together, me and a guy named Jason Stolz at Walrus Audio, Jason's really the electrical engineer brains behind, uh, you know, making the products, you know, work and sound really great and kind of design them in the direction that we want to go. A lot of that's Jason. And uh, yeah, together we just, you know, run the show and, and, uh, and take it where we want to go next, so. So was there, when you started this, was there a, did you feel there was a gap that you could, you know, go for in the pedal market? Because it, it kind of feels to me like... That is a good question. No, I don't think so. No. I think, you know, and I feel like the whole music industry is like this. Like there's not a lot of industries that where people start companies out of passions. Right. You know, a lot like in the tech industry or, you know, other parts of retail, you know, it's really business minded. And I feel like in music instruments, a lot of people start these companies, you know, out of passions. This is why you have a lot of hobbyists turned businessmen, yeah. you know, in the industry, which is why it's kind of the wild west, you know, I feel like with manufacturers sometimes going to NAM, but, uh, 
but yeah, so the answer is probably no. I didn't think that there was a, a lot of space to grow, and but I think just kind of with the direction that we design and where we want to take things, you know, we kind of stay in our lane and and go for it. And what what do you think that lane is? Because I, I I mean I it's a great question. I think I see Walrus maybe it's probably unfair to to sort of you know bring out the shoegazer card. You know, I mean it's like, but there definitely yeah. seems to be it's more of seems to be more of a brand where you're looking to create soundscapes and mm -hmm. and the graphics of the pedal you know draw you in and yeah it, it's got a so, vibe to it hasn't it so audio quality and usability like we are shooting for kind of the professional um you know someone who who's been around uh you know guitar for a while and um, we're shooting for that kind of person playing you know but when you take it out of the box there's an easy sound to find right out of the gate you don't have to dig deep so mm -hmm. like you know, professional grade tones, not super wonky, crazy over this way, but not really super boring in, in uh, entry level. Um, that's kind of where we stay. And then with the designs, we, you know, we try to make them look as good as they sound. And, and uh, I feel like, you know, when Walrus first started, you know, there wasn't a lot on the pedal shelf in terms of, you know, exciting looking pedals. And so uh, with kind of with the graphic art, that's kind of where we started and kind of sticking with it. So, so talk, you, you mentioned before uh, the Voyager as being yeah. the, the first one. I mean, do, have you got the sort of, and then you mentioned Descent as well. So are they the real, you know, are they the sort of seminal moments in the whole walrus? What, what would you, I suppose, you know, I suppose that where I'm getting at is, you know, which are the, the, the pedals that you think really stand out the most in, in a uh, pretty crowded marketplace, you know? So, so I could talk about, I could answer that question in terms of sales and what moves the most, but I could also just decide which ones are my favorites for sure. But I mean, obviously the Julia, uh, a lot of people have the Julia and mm -hmm. the Julia is a really exciting pedal for me. Um, probably my other favorite in the Walrus lineup is the 385 Overdrive. Yeah. Um, it's a, just a really amp style like overdrive with some pretty dramatic tone tweak capabilities. Um, and uh, when we released it, it was an experiment because it's based around the audio section of an old film projector. Uh, wow. And so it, we wanted to do like an amp style overdrive and you know, you kind of have like a few to choose from. It's like we could go with the Plexi sure. or we could go yeah, something like that. and. We're like, let's go do something really weird. And so the 385 was kind of born out of that. And uh, I love the way it responds when you kind of use it as a dirty preamp or just really as a, a gritty, uh, you know, rowdy overdrive. Did, so, And forgive me if I'm wrong here, but are you literally saying that the 385 came from plugging a guitar into a... Yeah, so there, there was a lot of, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, hobbyists that do uh, a lot of weird things with old audio equipment. And one of the things that we found was people taking these old Bell and Howell film projectors, right. you know, which show a movie, and then they have an amp section on there where you can plug in the audio for the movie for, not anymore, but back in yeah, the yeah, yeah. 50s and 60s. And, uh, and as soon as those kind of retired, they went to pawn shops and things like that. And then guitar players started picking them up and, uh, and using them as, you know, dirty guitar amps. And then there's a guy in Los Angeles, uh, his name's Austin Hooks and people have been doing it for a long time, but Austin is really the kind of the guy that's cleaned a lot of them up and, and built them for the Rolling Stones, Dawes, wow. uh, a lot of touring session musicians. And that's kind of what turned us on to it. And I, then, I, I guess it's not, it's just the next step on from people saying, I like the preamp sound of an old Echoplex or I like the preamp yeah, of a wireless system or sure. something like that. I yeah. know I've got a, a friend of my father-in-law's had a, um, a Gretsch amplifier that he had to get repaired on the road once back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the power section of this Gretsch amplifier was taken out of a jukebox. It was the only way they could, you know? And it's like, so I bet you if you've got an old, yeah. well, it's if a it jukebox, works, it from the, there's probably some way of modifying it to plug a guitar in. And For sure. Maybe that's it, well, it's a pedals. Hang on, let me just find my solicitor. <laughs> Can you, you register well, it's a pedals for me? Thank you very much.
Let, we should hear. Let, plug the 385 in All then. Right. Let's just see what it sounds like. We, we need more reverb on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, it's like a fuzzy distortion, isn't it? So yeah, that's a that's just kind of everything at noon. So the tone control, you know, uh, you can work as a bass cut and then a bass boost, and same with the treble, treble cut. Dynamic kind of range in there, isn't it? Really. I love it because when you kind of play delicately, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of overdrive happening. And then, like an amp would respond, when you start to dig in, that's when yeah. the grit yeah, really shows up. Nice. So I Good use response, mine. Yeah. I use mine pretty much always on. Right. And, you know, and I kind of just play delicately, and then I can dig in a little bit, and then I use the Voyager kind of as a clean boost, and those two in tandem. Is that what the Voyager but, uh, is? Just a straight clean boost? No, or is it's it more not. Of I mean, gain? it's an overdrive. But I turn right. the gain all the way down, and it kind of has a pretty, you know, preamp kind yeah. of sound. So yeah, it's probably not what it was supposed to be, but that, you know, and that music, you know. Put the put the, the Julia on as well, right, so that we it. can. You like chorus uh, vibrato or anything in between? Whatever. Without the drive, just like a real clean. There you go. You know, the lag control is manipulating the delay time. And uh, so you can kind of get like a thin chorus or a really dramatic chorus. Without messing with the depth knob. Who's your, what's your favorite guitar track using chorus ever? My favorite guitar track using chorus. I mean, anything, uh, probably anything from The Police. I knew you were gonna say that. So. It's a great, uh, absolutely yeah. great uh, chorusy guitar sound. Yeah, and then the vibrato, uh, I use it as a, personally, I use the vibrato always on, and I run the Julia first into my overdrives, and it kind of gives me this nice, uh, you know, old, uh, tapey sounding guitar. But um, always on. Yeah, even I with use the it. Uh huh. So right here. Oh, okay, so it, it's just. I use it. I use the depth pretty low and the lag pretty high. Just like that. Just kind of adds a little bit of warmth. And then you put a. And then. I've not really heard an effect. I've not really heard that effect used quite like that before. Normally it's set to a much more mm -hmm. extreme kind of setting, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of one of those effects and one of those tricks that you, you don't necessarily notice right out of the gate, but then once it's gone, you really want it back. You yeah. Know? Kind of like a slow phase on a guitar track or something like that. So. And then where after Julia, what came next that was kind of crazy popular. So after the Julia, um, really the Fathom reverb and then the slow reverb uh, were, uh, you know, kind of came after that and, and you know, turned a lot of heads for Walrus Audio. And so recently this year, the slow uh, reverb has- it's Such a has great a, pedal. I'm not even yeah, sure even now I understand what it does other than just make amazing reverb noises. Yeah, so uh, it has three algorithms and uh, one is called dark, and then one's rise, and the other one is dream. And so dark uh, adds a sub octave to the reverb. It's cool, isn't it? I, okay, so you got a, like an octave under yeah, the reverb. Yeah, and you can, you can decide how much of that octave you want in there. So if you want something a little bit more subtle, you know? kind of want, still want that beefy, meaty reverb. It can be there, but you can dial it back if it's a little too much, so. And then Rise. Uh, Is that Shimmer kind of vibe? Well, or? no, it allows the allows the reverb to kind of bloom in just a little bit. So if you just kind of strike it just once, like a dime. But, and then if you, you know, turn the mix all the way to just 100% wet, it'll. Who 
wouldn't want to play with this much reverb. They're really um, yeah. inspiring, kind of, you know, you just all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I'll play these notes, which I don't normally play. And, yeah, but yeah. they sound fine with all yeah. this reverb. It's very it's cool. It's perfect. And then Dream is a kind of a latching pad reverb. And so what you can do... A latching pad reverb? Yeah. You ready? I don't even know what that means. Oh, you mean as in you've got to press a button to make it work? Yeah. So, can you play again? Then you can kind of play over it. Turn the other fathom on if you want to still oh, so, have a kind so, of an right, ambient so you... sound. And then you've got to what? Unlatch it. Yeah, so you push it and uh And then you can do another chord presumably. And it comes and out. It just, just fades a away. Bit. Yeah, fades away. But you can also use it in the other uh, settings is kind of a sustain switch, you know, it'll kind of ramp up the wet signal when you play. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's probably been our biggest selling Walrus pedal to date, the, uh, the slow, and, and it's a, isn't it a Finnish word or something, or a, some it sort is of Swedish, for Swedish word. drowsy. Yeah, nice. I like and it. So just kind of the vibe of just kind of a, you know, a dreamy, drowsy, relaxing reverb. Uh, that's what the slow's for. And then for people who want to get, you know, uh, ambient and kind of light a candle alone in their dorm room and, you know, make music for the rest of the night, that's perfect. I and like then it. we, you know, we usually talk about the Fathom more of like a kind of your workhorse gigging reverb with hall and plate and then the lo fi setting. And uh, it does have like kind of a shimmery option in there. But when also. did you get into power as well? Because I, I kind of, the the world of power supplies has gone in the last five years from just being you can have a T-Rex fuel tank or you can have a Voodoo Labs. Yeah. And now it's like you can have one by everyone. But yours seem to be really popular. And, and I never really understand how you sort of, you know, create your own. It's just a power supply, isn't it? Yeah. So I think, you know, one of the difficult things probably a couple of years ago, like you're saying, you know, was finding enough. Uh, finding enough juice to run some of these heavier hitting DSP mm -hmm. current sucking effects that people were adding. You know, people were putting the Strymon Trinity at the, yeah. at the end of their board and there, you know, there wasn't a lot of power supplies that could, could handle and supply enough current for all those. And so really the Phoenix uh, was designed with four outputs, you know, high current outputs to be able to supply uh, power for all those or whatever, you know, DSP yeah. effects. And then you know, as people's pedal boards are growing these days, you know, uh, to be able to just have one power supply for, uh, for the whole board. And so the Atos is the smaller version of that. And then, you know, like every uh, Walrus initiative, there's always room to make something look really sexy. And so that's the- You uh, win that one. Yeah, I so do agree. Yours is the best looking power supply for so sure. So we, we're like, <laughs> you know, we had, the we had the power supplies, they're developed and they're ready to go. And they're like, well, let's make it like look really cool. And then we saw people move the pedal, uh, the power supplies from the bottom of the board. <laughs> To the top of the board. And we're, we're so like, oh, vain. Oh wow, you know. We're so like, vain. So we didn't even think of that. You know, that people would start putting them on top, but people, you know, we started getting That's board mad, shots on it? Instagram and FaceTube and whatever, uh, with you know, power supplies on top. It's pretty interesting. So. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Right. So, 2019 though, back end of 2019, your super busy designer Jason has yeah. done something new. This yes. looks cool. This is the EB10. So it's an EQ boost pedal, and uh, you have options to uh, to boost or to cut uh, your low, mids, highs. Uh, and really, the the idea behind it is to to get studio quality guitar tones, kind of like in a live setting. I know. Uh, I noticed it's got presets as well. So it, it does have presets. So I personally use it uh, switching. So I play an Ernie Ball Music Man and then a Telecaster, and then sometimes I have a Les Paul in the mix. Right. And so I can have three presets kind of for each of those whenever I switch guitars, because I'm not switching pedal boards. You know? Yeah. I'm not like that. But uh, but so you're it, you're not using it as like a an on off boost pedal and you're using it as an always on personally i use it as an always on and i feel like once you kind of find a tone that works for your rig it's hard to to take it out you know so uh i i do use it as an always on is this you know is this preamp based on something funky that you found like an old food processor or something that you plugged your guitar into no, it's, and it's it got based a great on, tone no it's just no, based on eq manipulation just eq really, manipulation yeah. I'm a bit disappointed about that. To be Is that a good answer? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I just, let's uh, not really. Oh wow, it lights up in a cool way, doesn't it? So yeah. Here, let's turn some. Yeah, of put these more off. reverb on. It's yeah. an object. So everything's at zero. You're not going to have any changes at all. Okay. And then, uh, when the switches are flipped up, that means you are boosting that mm -hmm. much amount of dB. And when the switches are flipped down on whatever control, it means you're cutting it. Right. So that there's the zero to twelve is a dB uh, right. no, setting, if you like. So okay. So up or down, uh, anything up to twelve dB. Right. So here's kind of your dry signal. Not kind of your dry signal. Just that is for totally sure. Totally my dry signal. Certainly yep. your dry signal. And then uh, when you turn it on. Okay, that's pretty subtle, but I know what you mean about it. Just yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of adds a degree of yeah, liveliness to it, doesn't it? So some mids or something. It, it is just so. What could you use this presumably as a boost into a into a drive pedal if you really want? Yeah, you to. totally could. You know, drive it a little bit more. What, what, like is the, what is the what is the adds ten dB of boost as well? And you can add that in one of your presets also. And so if so, like for for me when I switch between like the Music Man and the Tele, you know, when I hook up back to the Tele, I get a little bit of signal loss. And mm -hmm. so adding ten dB of boost on that channel uh, super helpful to keep everything pretty even. So that's what I mean. That's in addition to what you've done to the low bass and uh, to the bass, middle, and treble. Yes, as well. Wow. So we could probably, if I got myself just, and where's this is right at the front, isn't it? The chain. Yep. So what have you got just with a, just a, we could put the, the 385 or the Voyager. Yeah, that would actually work really great. So I, I mean, it's, again, it's another, I suppose one of the problems you have with as pedal designers is ultimately going, where do we go that hasn't just been... That's a great question. Here's, here's our Tube problem. Screamer clone. Right. No. So um, Walrus really goes two different directions. So pedals like the Monument, the 385, the Julia, the Lillian, like those were kind of all born projects from like just inspiration from albums we were listening to yeah. so sometimes you know like the 385 or the monument you know when we really got heavy into you know the blake mills solo record hi-ho you know we were right. kind of like how can we make all these guitar sounds ourselves without having to scour ebay for you know old yep. equipment that isn't in production <laughs> anymore and so that's where that came from uh 
and then sometimes it's you know sometimes it's uh, you know everybody's into reverb you know how can we play a part and support the yeah. the reverb initiative you know the reverb movement you I know like it. all that kind of stuff so yeah that's that that is uh, that's kind of how we decide what we develop and and how we schedule out what we're going to build and because it, it all doesn't that kind of stuff it, it kind of feels to me like this preamp pedally thing is another one of those ones where they you know we've scratched the surface a little bit with you know i don't know what's been popular ep boosts and things for like sure that. but this is almost like going oh okay here's it let's see if we can yeah it's convince it, everyone that they need one of these as EQ well is one of the most simplest ways to to turn like an okay guitar sound into yeah. like a brilliant wonderful guitar sound you know and i think we're really you know looking for you know the most expensive or most perfect or, or the yeah. best overdrive to really get us there but really if you just you know pick up an eq pedal and make a couple tweaks like you can really love if, the simplest of guitar tones i wonder, I wonder if boss are sitting there going yes we have been telling you that since the 80s <laughs> they when are we brought a out lot our of everybody that, exactly. graphic eq pedal that nobody's bought for the last 40 years <laughs> everybody that's made um, one has been saying that yeah sure well look so. it's some cool stuff i think definitely definitely what hopefully you have seen in this video is some uh, better playing interspersed from our very own uh, Danish Pete um, but yeah it's cool to me man and the, I, I love the pedals and you know we've had a ton of fun with things like the 8 the slow and uh, it's really said I think it's testament yeah. to the amount that you see us using these pedals in videos that aren't about these pedals yeah. as to how much we like them but yeah they're very very cool well look you're so nice thank you very Appreciate much for coming you. over yeah uh, comment section below any other questions you want to ask these guys uh, links to all the specs and everything will be in the description of the video hope you've enjoyed this anyway i'm in the captain this is colt and we shall see you next time see ya.